Man, I don't know if it's just the fact that this camera sucks, but that I look like shit at 3 in the morning compared to 3 in the afternoon. Either way, I get the best ideas for these videos sometimes at the weirdest possible times, so or usually after I've had something to drink and I come home, and that's why I'm doing them at these times. Well, I'm not exactly at my prettiest. The point of today's video is on password unlocks, EFI password unlocks, bad ESN wiping and bad IMEI fixing and all this crap that I'm seeing talked about on forums and on cell phone repair groups and on Usenet where the focus is on resetting passwords, BIOS passwords on laptops, resetting or repairing bad IMEIs on cell phones or changing the IMEI so that you can get around the these locks that carriers have when a device really should not be used and it's something that just kind of pisses me off every single time I see one of these threads posted every time I see this advice posted on a fundamental level it pisses me off there are two reasons the first one it goes back to practical reality. Why would somebody have a password on their laptop, an EFI password? Why would that password be there? So that you can't get in. And again, these are not like, this is not like the password to Walgreens where I, I use that online password to buy one item at a discount on their website two years ago. This is a device I use every day. The chances of forgetting, again, the chances of forgetting my Best Buy login password when I may use that to buy an HDMI cable like once a year. I get that, but the laptop that I use every day, I'm not, again, just practical reality, that's not a password that's being forgotten. So the main reason to reset this very often is because the machine was stolen and the person who stole it gave it to somebody who now has a machine with a password on it. And that is just not something I find cool. The same is true for the phone. When does this happen with the phone? It happens when, uh, you know, somebody loses it. They call and they go, somebody stole my phone. And then they go, okay, we're now blacklisting it. And, you know, how often do these, again, how often do these IMEO codes, like, just go bad for no reason? Very often they don't. And you know, one of the things that I said in the Reballing is BS video was that, you know, the biggest argument that I hated from all the people replying was the, you can't prove the problem is in the chip. And you're right, because I didn't actually cut it open. I didn't actually cut it open to see that it was bad or x-ray it. I come to that conclusion based on experience. Again, just based on Reball the 2011 MacBook Pro, I dare you, and give it to a video editor. Just like, no, it doesn't work. It's practical reality. Here, I'm doing the opposite. I'm actually using that on you. You cannot prove that it was not stolen, which is one of the reasons that I'm suggesting you not work on it. This goes back to practical reality, because even though I'm using the same argument that I thought was ridiculous before, the reason I'm qualifying it now is, again, just to, I'm trying to qualify it with these practical statements. How is it that a device where you use that thing every single day. How are you going to forget the password to it? Explain that to me. How does a phone get reported stolen accidentally? Again, am I going to accidentally wait on hold with, with Verizon for 20 minutes, then accidentally hit four, which is like my phone is stolen, then accidentally file it stolen with the representative? Like that, that doesn't happen. These ESNs go bad because somebody runs up and steals the crap from somebody and then they sell it to somebody who then it goes on this form and tries to ask for money. And I don't care if you're not the one who stole it. I don't care. I still just find it disgusting. I find, again, I'm not the one who stole it. And a big defense here is, you know, the original owner's never getting it back anyway, so what do we do now? That's still disgusting. I don't want to be a part of that. That's not how I want to make my money. That is bad karma going out in the world. And you may say this is silly and stupid because this is a channel on how to make money, but I draw the line with this crap. The only way that I can be sure that I am never going to be used as an accessory to this bullshit is by simply never offering a password reset service, by never offering an IMEI repair service, by never offering an ESM repair service. I don't care if you come to me with receipts and all, and all this other stuff, I, I just don't care. The only way I can be guaranteed to never take part in this is if I never offer it. Now you may say I'm missing out on money, right? I'm missing out on money and I'm a businessman, so this is bad. 
Well, that's the second thing that offends me about this. The second way that this offends me is not just as somebody in the moral high ground, but rather is as somebody who is an avid technologist. As an avid technologist who is encouraging you to up your technology skills, who is encouraging you to up your electronic skills, it offends me on a fundamental level to see people getting into the craft wasting time on this crap. Because that is what it is. Crap! Most of the time you find some programming, you find some silly thing that allows you to reset this crap that requires virtually no brain power to use or operate. It's a skill that you cannot carry to any other part of our field, any other thing that we do. You cannot put that on your resume. I can put on my resume that I spent the last six years of my life working on these products. I could put that on my resume and even if nobody cares about my resume, the experience that I gained through spending these years of my life repairing these products at component level may apply to other areas of electronics, may apply to other companies, other fields, may help me to repair other devices, may help me someday when I want to design other devices. But you, you resetting ESNs using some stupid little tool that is going to be obsolete or fundamentally broken in three months from now, how is that going to help you? Move on. How is that going to help you in another field? How is that going to help you, uh, you know, climb the ladder in IT and move on someday and get a better job? You know, I spend 10 or 20 minutes in front of a board and figure out that PP3V42G3H is shorting the ground because of a small ceramic capacitor that's blown. I get 200 to 325 bucks. You reset this password, you get 20 to 40 bucks for the same amount of time spent. So you're making 10% what I do, 10% for the same amount of time. This is a reason I'm mad. It's not, again, let's move beyond the morals. Let's assume that I am some just miserable prick that, would just, that just loves the idea of people getting their phones stolen, who loves the idea of making money off of other people's misfortune. Let's assume that I'm just Scrooge, I'm just a piece of crap. And let's talk about it from the money perspective. The money's not there. And this reminds me of, of the recording studio world. I remember the first time that I went to a world-class recording facility. My God, there are a lot of drug dealers in world-class recording facilities. And you know, I, was, I never took part in this. I, I honestly, as lame as it sounds, I have not even smoked weed over the course of my lifetime. And you know, there are a lot of drug dealers at these places. And since I was surrounded by them all the time, I got to talk with them. And one of the misconceptions I had as a teenager from television, from movies, from stereotypes, is that all these drug dealers, they're doing this illegal shit that's bad, but they're making tons of money. They're making all this money. They're living it up and life's great. And that's if you're like a, a kingpin. That's if you're at the kingpin level drug dealer. The reality is that the average drug dealer, the average drug dealer, is making like, that I met, is making like 100 to $200 a day and living in a dumpy apartment somewhere in East New York. And you know, that's not that, you know, you can live off of 100 to $200 a day. Absolutely, you can live off of that one or $200 a day, right? But that's not that impressive anymore. It's like, okay, I'm making what you make I don't even think I make that much. Again, I make a living. I can feed my cat. I, at the time, I had decent speakers and my apartment wasn't that bad, but I'm making what you're making and everything I'm doing is legal? Are you kidding me? It, it really just struck me like, what in God's name are you doing selling these little bags of powder and, and, and oregano looking stuff that can get you tossed in prison for three months, six months, years? You're doing crap that people are getting shot over, killed over, stabbed over to make what I do? And that's what kills me with this. Again, if, if, you, if you are resetting passwords, if you're resetting EFI passwords and you're raking in five, ten thousand dollars a day, I'm not, I'm not gonna say that it's morally the right thing to do in a lot of the cases, but I can understand it. And on some sick level, I can at least respect that you're making money off of it, even if you're making money off of something that I find to be completely disgusting. If you are changing ESNs and changing IMEIs and you are living it up in a mansion and you got your Bentleys lined up in front of your house, again, I'm not saying I agree with this crap. I'm not saying that I even want to live within one block of the people who are doing that crap. But I understand it and on some sick level, as a business owner, I can respect that you're making money at what you do. But when you're charging this like... 30 to 50 dollars for these IMEI and flashes and unlocks and BIOS password repairs 
and your store looks like my bathroom and you are getting one customer every couple of days. It's just like, why? Really? Why? Take the time that you're putting into this crap. Seriously, take the time that you're putting into this bullshit that is never going to apply to any other field and put it into something else. Again, the ethics part, I, I don't want to be anywhere near the ethics part. I don't, again, I am okay with all the money I've lost from any of the password resets that may have been legitimate. If I, if I turn down even one person over the past six years who, who brought me something stolen, like, I, I am okay with that. But what really offends me, again, at core deep down as a technologist, as somebody who enjoys making money in the field of electronics, is the idea that every second that you could be spending becoming a better technician is time that you are spending becoming better at bunk. And that, that, is, that is what truly offends me. And I'm not trying to insult you as the individual doing it because that's a common misconception that I'm looking down on people. If I looked down on people that knew less than I did, do you think I would have bought a $2,000 camera and a microscope camera and spent hours upon hours at work after I'm done with my job just to show you how to do what I do? Not really. That, that wouldn't really make sense. If I looked down on you, I would say, ha, 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 I can do something that you can't, ha, 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 without showing you how. Rather, there is a guide, a step-by-step -step guide in many of these videos in how to use your brain, in how to solve these problems, in how to move on to the next thing, so that whole, and again, you don't have to listen to me to do these amazing things. I don't even think they're that amazing. You can learn on your own. And I don't even care if this is what you do. Do you want to move on to doing board level repairs? Do you want to move on to creating network infrastructure for other companies? Do you want to do CCTV installation? Do you want to be a mechanic will fit. I don't care whatever it is you want to do with your life, that's great. Do something productive. Do something that uh, adds to the good that's in the world and do something that adds to the good that's in the world that makes you money that you can follow from field to field to field. If my repair shop closed today, I could get a job at any repair shop that does this across the country making good money, probably making more than every other technician in that store because I may know more, I may know how to do things that they don't, and if this entire business collapsed on itself today and every single Apple product that had ever been made vaporized in the thin air, I could at the very least get a mid-level job at some kind of design or engineering or repair firm uh, because of the level of knowledge that I have right now. Can you say the same for you if you have spent the last six years of your life that I spent learning electronics and troubleshooting, learning how to reset BIOS, Windows, passwords, IMEIs and ESNs on iPhones and Android phones? Probably not. Oh, please take my advice. Please move out of the field of doing this crap. Please better yourself and learn how to do something that is actually going to get you somewhere. That's all I have to say for today.